Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. We are downtown Long Beach. Nice little nook here. We got the fall colors going on and we're checking out a new one from Gazelle. This is the City Zen T9 HMB Hybrid Mid-Drive Bosch. That's what that stands for. And then we also have the City Zen T10 over here. This is a Speed Pedelec, whereas this one is not. This is just a standard Bosch performance line motor down here versus a performance line speed. I'm with Chris Nolte from Propel Bikes. How's it going? Hey guys. You know, this is a, a fun little ride. It's great to have bikes back to back, and that's that's one you carry right over there that's in your shop. And this is one they just dropped off because it's kind of like a, a new release for them. They both use the Bosch Power 2 battery. Really clean integration, I like that a lot. And one of the big things is the price. So I think this one's $32.99. That's right. And then $42.99 over there. So a thousand bucks, and the difference is, is up to 28 miles per hour on that uh, speed motor there. We've got a Bosch Intuvia display, which is removable, and it's got the active USB port. We got some Ergon grips. We've also got a wider range here. This is a 10-speed Shimano Dior versus nine speeds. Am I missing anything? Anything else? Oh. Yeah, they upgraded the light uh, to, this is the uh, Blue Line 50E, and then the also the suspension fork in comparison. How could I forget? And that's such a big thing when yeah. you're going fast. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, you know, for a thousand bucks, you save some, some weight. There's about a pound less on this. And I think that some of that does come back to the suspension fork. This is about 53 and a half pounds right here, which isn't too bad. It's got the Kirana, like sort of plastic and aluminum, a great hybrid design here. So it's a bit quieter and stiffer, but still lightweight. It's not like full aluminum or steel. Really nice fenders here. We got this integrated rack that's weighted up to 27 kilograms, which is about 60 pounds. And check this bungee thing out. You can just kind of pull on it like this, and you can even take it all the way off. Chris, can you go ahead and yeah, sure. demo that? Just pop it off like this. Yeah, we were sort of realizing this earlier. If you're putting like a child seat on the back or something, it's, it's really cool to be able to take that off. Most of the time, bungee cords come down along the side and they do have the loop still, so you could do uh, side bungees if you wanted. We've got the integrated rear light as well, so that's uh, Spinninga Solo, and then that headlight. It's the same AXA blue line, it's just 30 lux instead of 50. It's got the nice windows on the sides. I'm gonna try to show you that. I'll boot up the bike, there we go. So I'm really a, you know, it's, I'm kind of a safety nut, and so having the integrated lights is great. This one points where you steer, which is really nice. There's no suspension fork here, so it's not gonna be bouncing around. The, the whole bike kind of bounces around, to be honest with you, depending on the terrain. But the tires here are pretty decent. These are Continental. They do have puncture resistance built in, and it's 28 by 1.6, so definitely more efficient. A little bit of a tread pattern, just depending on the PSI that you set. And it is a little bit higher, up to 73 PSI. So. Yeah, you know, even the rims. This is a little bit more of like a mid-dish, kind of an aero design. I, I like this bike if you're in an environment where it's relatively smooth. This is not the kind of bike I would plan to take on trails, even though, you you know, the bike can handle it. I just find that the body position can be a little bit more jarring, especially if you have it in this forward position right here. So they've got this Smika 3D Forge adjustable angle stem. And right now, again, it's a little more aggressive. So you're aerodynamic and you're sporty, but you can bring it back up, which is, that's kind of cool to me. I didn't see that adjustability over here on the speed version, but I think, is this a 2018 or a 2017 model, Chris? Oh, uh, this is a 2018. 2018 and we're going into 2019. So maybe that's, you know, we can see these slight variations across the bikes and it's really cool to be able to go into a dealer and you know, get a little bit of feedback. One of the details about say like the adjustable stem, uh, in Europe there are certain regulations around that sort of thing. Oh. So it's, it's quite possible that it wouldn't be allowed on a speed bike because it's Good subject point. to higher forces and that sort of thing. Excellent point, dude. I really appreciate you saying that. Uh, one of the things I, I often look out for when I'm owning a bike and I'm riding it over the course of time and maybe in different terrain is I try to keep that tight. If you ever notice that there's like a little bit of a rattle going on, tighten it up because there are teeth in there and they can sort of get stripped over time. Um, and then we've got these locking flat grips. We've got hydraulic disc brakes. Love that. 160 millimeter rotors, which is fine. I mean, I think that's a good fit for a class one electric bike. I really like the kickstand. 
This is adjustable height and it's tool free. So there's just like a little button on the underside and you can extend it, which I'm frequently doing that. You'll hear me comment on kickstands a lot because I got to take these pictures and I want them to be like really nice, have the bike standing up just perfectly. And then back to safety. So we mentioned the lights. We've got those reflective sidewalls on those great tires. And we've also got a light color on this one. So it's like kind of a ivory gloss is what they call it versus a darker kind of a black over there. It's very classy and timeless, both of these. And I think that's how it is. I don't think there are other color choices. They also, they only come in this mid-step frame, which I think is an excellent choice. It's gonna be a little bit easier to approach and step over, especially if you've got that, maybe some panniers or like a trunk bag or something, you're trying to swing your leg over. I think this is great because it balances stiffness and performance characteristics and fairly lightweight versus something that's like gotta be reinforced because it's a really low wave style. But it's still kind of a unisex, could be masculine. It's also approachable if you're a girl and you've got like a skirt or something and they've got three frame sizes. So there's just, there's a lot here to appreciate, uh, you know, and with the power tube battery being integrated and kept super low and kind of hidden, and even the motor, it's a little bit larger. It's got that plastic casing. This is the old, you know, traditional Bosch casing, but that weight is positioned so well, and you've got that high capacity battery with a fairly efficient motor. It's performance with up to 63 meters of torque, but it's it's a little bit less power hungry maybe than that one. So I was looking at this as maybe kind of a trekking platform. You know, you think about those handlebar adjustability, you've got the, the bags that you can, you can add on, you've got the lock built right in. This is just feature complete. You've got pretty much everything you want. And I would definitely be looking at this seat post uh, for an upgrade, maybe do like a suspension seat post from Thudbuster, or Body Float, or, you know, I think they've got, now it's Connect. Uh, there's, there's other companies out there that do a few. Or like if you have, if you're used to riding a road bike with like really narrow tires, I mean, yeah, in a this lot is of ways, this is a, a big upgrade to that. So, yeah. you know, I think we're very used to riding, you know, electric bikes. Are we getting old, Chris? I think, I, think <laughs> I don't I know. I'm like looking at those ergonomic grips over there, like, yes, yeah, suspension. Um, but you're right. Like these are definitely higher volume. Uh, for, for air volume on those tires. And being 28 inch or 700 C, you get that lower attack angle. You get that really nice momentum going. It's, it's, a, it's a good setup. By the way, quick release on um, both of these wheels, the drivetrain, the wheels, everything on this is, is pretty like bike-like. And that's the benefit of using like a mid-drive, something that's very efficient. And then back to those fenders, we've also got this plastic chain cover. So you're not gonna get greasy and stuff. Back here, we've got 11 to 36 tooth, so decent spread, nine speed, Shimano Dior, that's a good component group. You know, we got like Turney, Altus, Acera, Alivio. So th this is Dior, it's like, it's much, it's much more lightweight, reliable. 15 tooth sprocket up there. Um, decent pedals, you know, these are good urban pedals. Uh, got an alloy core, so they're a little bit stronger, but then the rubber grips, so they won't cut your shins up. And then here's the battery charger over here. This one does come with a four amp charger, a little bit faster, fairly lightweight, 1.7 pounds. So you can put it into a backpack and take it with you and maybe charge inside at work or inside at home. It's a little bit dreary today. We're in Long Beach and normally the sun is shining, but I wanted to take advantage of this weather because Gazelle is, it's like from the Netherlands, it's a Dutch brand. And it does tend to be maybe a little rainier there, and that's what we got the fenders and stuff for. It's taking care of us. That's right. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to have a commuter bike, you never really can anticipate what the weather is going to be, even in a place like Southern California, where you know you think that it never rains, or at least I did. <laughs> uh, and you know, I think having those details, having a really solid rack. I mean, that 60-pound rack, you could put a child seat on there that the child seat can weigh 10 pounds and then it can carry a 45 pound child. Like, <laughs> wow. You know, yeah. cause that's the limit generally speaking for a lot of the child seats. So huh. it's, it's pretty smart because a lot of times the racks might be 40, 45 pounds or something like that. So then if you have a 10 pound child seat, mm -hmm. then basically you're limited to 35 pound child. So. And to add to that. So we were looking at some other gazelle bikes earlier today and they had like the rear rack battery. So that cuts down on the overall weight capacity where in this case the battery is separated and, and you're really, um, you're freeing up that rack to do heavy lifting. Great points, Chris. I really appreciate the, the feedback. It's nice to just, just take it in, right? Look at these bikes. I think they, they offer 
that that definitely that sportier a little bit more active type of riding and that's what we see with the Bosch performance line motors they do weigh a little bit more and I want to talk about how those work okay so this is an 8.8 .8 pound motor roughly and there's a motor controller inside that's listening for this magnet it passes a little sensor right there it listens for pedal cadence and pedal torque over a thousand times per second and it sort of smooths out your pedal motion so a lot of times it's sort of like pressure not as much pressure pressure and it's apparently it's listening to your wave and it, it sort of smooths it out so you get a consistent natural feel from the motor but then it also listens for spikes in pressure and that is when the derailleur is is firing because you're shifting gears so when when it senses that it's called shift detection it releases a little bit of pressure from the motor so that the the gears won't strip and the chain maybe won't break or fall off quite as easily and it's one of the only companies that really does that so Bosch has just a a, a huge line of hardware products from tools to washing machines even to sensors in smartphones um, so they leverage a lot of that technology right here and the performance line is one of their higher end motors but there is a bit of a drawback you can't really see it from where we are because they've got that chain cover but there's a smaller sprocket remember 15 tooth and it spins two and a half revolutions for every single crank revolution and that whole conversion, it happens through a reduction gear. And there's a tiny bit of friction. So if you're pedaling this thing and it's turned off, which you can do, it's totally fine. And it's actually, it feels pretty natural to me, but there's technically, there's a little bit of resistance happening in there with the reduction gearing. And then if you try to go beyond 20 miles per hour or 28 miles per hour, you get into that reduction gearing drag again. It's a minor thing. I mean, what's your experience? Does anyone even comment on this, Chris? Um. I mean, it comes up, I think what comes up most commonly is somebody that really feels like they want to have the speed and they feel limited past 20 miles an hour. And it's not necessarily just the, the resistance in the motor, which there is a little bit, but it's pretty insignificant. Yeah. I think mostly what people feel is when you go beyond 20 miles an hour, at that point, you're all on your own. Yeah. You know, that's a good point. Um, when was the last time you pedaled beyond tw like a non-electric bike past not, 20? I mean, <laughs> not not too common, you know, for sure. I mean, on electric, yeah, certainly sometimes because it's so easy to get up to 20 so to pedal beyond that. And that's my point. OK, yeah. I think it's about anchoring like you feel, whoa, I feel I'm going fast. And then when the motor goes away, you're like, what happened? And you got wind, you've got friction with the right. wheels. And so you can definitely and I have gone. I've gone like 40 miles per hour on e-bikes just going down hills. But the motor wasn't helping me, it was gravity. So when you're on flats, right. any bike past 20 can feel start to feel a little bit like slow. Another important point is just how the bike is all set up as a complete package, right? Because mm -hmm. this bike specifically is designed to go 20 miles an hour. Now the, oh, the yeah. chain ring on here is 15 tooth, which is equivalent to like a 38 tooth chain ring. Yeah. Now some of the speed bikes might have like a 22 chain ring, which is more like a 50 tooth chain ring equivalent nice which math. at that point you feel kind of like you, you might have you might pedal beyond the motor a little bit too easily yeah and at that point it kind of feels uncomfortable when the bike is geared properly and the bike is intended to for that purpose it it feels a lot more natural that's a great point i mean yeah. you know it's fun to do these reviews together because there are a lot of concepts to go over and we we learn about these things from the companies and we hear about it from customers and we study the bikes um but yeah that's what's happening so this one has got a smaller chain ring than that one and it's it's really designed and again there's an extra gear on that one so you get more steps i think that's pretty good i i would like to show the battery can can we do that yeah for sure so currently the key is in inside this uh, cafe lock or frame lock. So we'll have to lock the lock first and remove the key. Yeah. Uh, and then basically we're just gonna insert the key in here um, and we're gonna unlock it. Now, when you unlock it, it's only gonna come this far because this battery is really designed as a safety measure to prevent the battery from coming out even if it was unlocked. Um, and then basically you're just going to push this little lever here yeah. and by pushing that you can release the battery and pull it off the bike. Now there's two different designs of these batteries. This, this one is kind of long this way. There's another battery that's designed to go in say this way and it has a, a, a different profile to it. Interesting. So I didn't realize that. I thought the power tubes were all the same. Yeah, they're, so they're basically the same capacity 
overall the they look very similar but there are two different designs it's mainly the way the latch is designed huh yeah okay and this is i think what is this like 6.3 pounds or something like that we were i mean it might be slightly heavier because right. it's got the cover yeah and so you do have this cover on here so if you were to buy a replacement battery from a dealer through bosch basically you get the battery without the cover i mean in theory you could potentially get another cover from uh gazelle but basically the battery uh on its own is just this and this is a more a design cover which different manufacturers use different designs and it to is fit cool. with their it's got the power button yeah this is something that's kind of unique to them where you can huh. actually power on the battery or the bike from this little button which i think it's a really nice touch yeah very cool very nice to see that up close 36 volts I think it's 13.4 amp hours, so 482.4 watt hours. That's why they call it the Power Tube 500, because it's roughly 500 watt hours. I've actually talked to people at Bosch, and they're like, actually, it is 500. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a matter of the math, and maybe they give you a little extra capacity than what's on the label. I don't really know. I'm talking to you, Jonathan. Uh, but it's great to get as detailed as possible. I'm always calling out how I've measured a lot of these, these items on the bike. Uh, you know, I spend a lot of time with Chris and we look at all the different parts when, when I'm visiting his shop or really anyone's shop, uh, but I welcome feedback and, and comments and stuff. Here's the charging port for when the battery is mounted to the bike. And personally, you know, I, I store my bike inside because I have room for it, but not everyone does. So if you leave the battery on, you charge right here. Otherwise you can charge the battery off the bike like we talked about earlier. And I like that this charging port's up high, so it's not gonna get in the way of these pedals if you, you kind of cycle these accidentally. Uh, the key port is a little bit more vulnerable right down there so just be careful so you don't get your your keychain snagged and then the key that's in the cafe lock you can't really pull it out unless you lock the bike so for me that's kind of a it's kind of annoying because let's say you got a keychain on this and it's dangling down the whole time so i sort of it sort of makes you want to like leave this in and then lock the bike every time but now you've got a key with no keychain and it's just flopping around in your pocket there are other cafe locks where you can pull the key out and that's my preference for the reasons i just explained do you have a what's that, your input well that's that's also this kind of dutch standard so in germany it's not required but in, in oh it's a requirement uh, for them i believe so yeah it's kind of a weird uh safety requirement i believe and and the axle locks they specifically do that but uh and some of the abis locks do it but many of them don't but okay. i also have that preference not to use it because um but it's it's not not such a bad it's thing. Not the end of the world. Yeah. But okay, I have a message for the king and queen of what is it, the Netherlands? Because that's where this company is from. Apparently, Gazelle is you know they're Royal Dutch company, so that's companies that have been around for over 100 years. They have a great reputation. 1892, right? So these guys have been around. I, I guess I'm just I'm asking you know why? Maybe they'll chime in. Maybe the the leaders of the Netherlands can leave a comment. I would love that. I would absolutely, give me a call. It'd be great. I, I mean this respectfully. Um, I'm just trying to figure it out. And I'm, I'm commenting from just sort of like an everyday Joe sort of perspective, trying to give you guys some feedback about this bike. Cause you're spending a lot of money potentially. There are a lot of choices out there, but this is one of the leaders in Europe and they're really sold all over the, the world. You know, it's like Europe and North America, Canada, US and Australia, probably some other That's places. Right. So it's, it's high quality. Why do you carry them, Chris? Yeah, exactly that. I mean, we found that the quality is really high. There's a there's a big attention to detail. Um, the the fit and finish of the bike is is really dialed yeah. in. They on that and, note, they they do a ton of testing, like UV testing, saltwater testing, because they're really trying to make these stand up. There are some other bikes in the past where the paint would fade really quickly. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, the, the intended use for these bikes is very different than what a lot of us generally see in the U.S. And I think that that's what we're grateful and we're often seeking these European brands because they're designed for everyday commuter use. They're designed to be locked up outside and leave in all these elements like you talk about the UV testing on the paint. Yeah. You think about, you know, Holland and, and what the conditions might exist there of raining all the time and being near the, the water. Getting it's, thrown into the canals in Amsterdam and fished out and still working well. hopefully. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. Thank you. So that's, that's great. Um, I'm going to jump into the display. We, these reviews go along because there's a lot to talk about. This is the Bosch Purion. It's got a power button up top. Press it. 
comes to life very quickly. You could swivel it a little bit if, you know, because you'll notice there's some glare there right now. You can swivel it a little bit uh, if you don't tighten it down too much, but it's not removable. So coming back to, I like how you can remove the battery. And I, I sort of prefer the larger Intuvia myself. It's just, it's easier to see, take it off. It's got an active USB, whereas this one, it's got the, the micro USB there, but it's just for diagnostics and software. So it's kind of like boohoo, wish Bosch would, would change that. Um, we've got speed right there at the top. If you hold minus and tap power, it'll go from miles per hour to kilometers per hour and back. So that's nice. Five ticks on that battery infographic, the headlight infographic. And if we hold plus, you can turn the lights off or on, which is kind of nice. They leave that open. And then we've got some menus in the middle. So right now we're on range, okay? And the bike starts in off. So that's why there's just like a minus symbol because it's like, well, you can go as far as you want if you're pedaling. And then you go to eco and then it goes back to range 54 miles is the estimate all the way up to turbo and now it says 23 so there's a significant change in the estimated range based on how full the battery is and how you've been riding over the course of the past mile or so so it's very dynamic remember the the bosch sensors and the bosch um, controller system so we know what plus and minus do you can get the lights if you hold minus you can change to assist level which by the way anytime you change assist level it sort of blinks on for a minute to remind you the other thing is trip meter here. So 162 miles on this trip, total 182. This is a demo bike and then back to range. So it's very cool. And as long as you're, you know, in one of the assist levels, you can press this walk mode button and then uh, hold the plus button and the bike will, will kind of, you know, it's like four miles per hour, six kilometers per hour. That's handy if you get a flat or maybe you're in a place where you're not supposed to ride bikes or something like that. Uh, walk mode is a nice feature to have. Not every electric bike has that, so it's nice to see that they've enabled it. All in all, this this display, you know, it's it's very usable. It's simple. It's easy to reach. They've done a good job. And then Chris has told me that he and some of the other shops they'll actually upgrade you to the Intuvia for a couple hundred bucks if you want. And this this bike, they do have plenty of space in the middle, so that's worth considering if you're like me and you like the bigger um, display. So I think that's about it. Chris, do you have anything that might have forgotten, or should I just hop on this thing? I think let's go for a ride. Okay, sweet. I'm gonna just pedal along. Maybe we'll we'll head that way for a second and then trade off so you can get a, a different view. Okay guys, so I'm gonna go into turbo mode here. I like to do the highest level assist so you can hear it. There we go. Very nice. So very quickly you're up to almost 20 miles per hour but you can hear that motor. It's much more pronounced than some of the Bosch Active Line motors that they're selling on the other Gazelle bikes now. Um, again, those motors, slightly lighter weight, 7.1 pounds versus 8.8 .8 pounds. That does make a difference. I'm gonna shift through and we can do that shift detection thing we talked about earlier. Pretty nice, relatively smooth. The bike's riding really well. And on terrain like this where, whoa boy, it's not too, uh, there we go. We got a little bit of wind going on here. So I'm, uh, the no hands isn't working perfectly, but the bike's stable enough. And uh, you know, we were talking about shifting gears and stuff. I still let off, I still let off a little bit um, just to try to help and make that really smooth shift. I come from a, like a road cycling background and just the way that these motors are so sensitive and they're listening for all those different signals it allows you to shift just extremely quickly especially when you have like a cassette and a derailleur some of the other ones with like internally geared hubs and stuff it's a little slower this is just snappy very sporty okay guys we got you pointing down at that awesome plastic chain cover you're not gonna be able to see the sprocket spinning but you'll probably be able to see that chain just rotating through very quickly and then doing some gear shifting listening for the shift detection and stuff Again, I'm going to pedal at higher cadence initially, and you'll hear it ramp up like ree, and then I'll switch to lower gears and it'll get quiet. I'm also going to be riding in turbo, which is the highest level of assist. It's the most pronounced. So let's do it.
so clean and quiet, smooth there with the braking. We were up to 22 miles per hour actually, because I was standing and really, really uh, pumping hard there for a minute. And the motor just fades out, right? After about 20, it sort of just goes away. But I, I wanted to sort of demonstrate that you can pedal faster. And of course you can coast down hills much faster. There's really, you know, no limit. It's just like a bike in that sense. So there you go. Now we're gonna hop on the speed bike and I'm gonna show you what Chris looks like over there. this bike in a higher gear uh, so it's really quiet most of the time that that kind of that noise comes from spinning at a higher rpm these performance line motors they can support up to 120 rpm compared to the active line it's like 100 and the active line plus 105 so for me being able to spin quickly it's more like a road bike you're kind of spinning it's sporty and the motor won't drop out on you if like, let's say you're heading towards a hill and you're downshifting because you know you're gonna climb. With some of the, the more like kind of neighborhood motors, uh, they, they just drop out and then you don't get the support you need. Um, same thing with the, the mountain bikes are all, they all use the higher RPM motors. So yeah, it's good stuff, man. Chris just did like five shifts. It's the tail light. Beautiful. Well, Chris, thank you so much for taking me on a little tour. Thank you. Really a pleasure. It's a beautiful spot. Uh, like I said, I'll have all the specs back at the website, electricbikereview.com. Feel free to chime in with any comments, questions, feedback. I'll do my best to answer. I love you guys. Ride safe. We'll see you next time.